Welcome, my friends. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is on the warpath and is determined to have Clarence Thomas resign or be impeached. At a House Judiciary Committee meeting, Matt Gates had some very simple questions for FBI Assistant Director of Cyber about Hunter Biden's laptop that we all want answers to. 20 states joined Florida to put an end to the transportation mask mandate permanently. Okay, my friends, let's take a closer look together. Welcome to Veracity. I'm your host, Michael Lewis. Now, before we begin, I have to thank today's sponsor. Our sponsor for today's episode is you. And I have to say thank you for everyone who has taken their hard-earned money and contributed to the success of the show. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. And if you want to become a member and help contribute to the show, then click the link in the description and become a member and help me on my mission to deliver truthful news. The Supreme Court of the United States is an independent body from the government that empowers it to make independent and responsible decisions. However, if the government tries to control the ultimate power of the Supreme Court, then it could result in complete anarchy. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez recently tweeted that Justice Clarence Thomas should resign from the Supreme Court because of his unacceptable behavior that compromises the credibility of a judge. And if he does not resign, then his failure to disclose income from the right-wing organizations, recuse himself from matters involving his wife, and his vote to block Trump-era White House documents from being handed over to the House Committee for investigation on January 6th Capitol attack, must be investigated and can serve as grounds for impeachment. It's important to keep in mind, no hard evidence has been found yet against Justice Clarence Thomas concerning claims made by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, except the messages that have been found to be shared between the wife of Justice Clarence Thomas and the then White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows. The messages were shared weeks after the 2020 elections by Clarence's wife strongly advising the Trump organization not to accept the results. To be more specific, the text said, Help this great president stand firm, Mark. The majority knows Biden and the left are attempting the greatest heist of our history. These messages were shared on November 10th, 2020. From leaving the laptop at the repair shop in Delaware to landing directly into the hands of the FBI cyber division, President Joe Biden's son's laptop was the center of argument during the House Judiciary Committee hearing on Tuesday. As Hunter Biden is facing federal investigation regarding his inappropriate financial and foreign business affairs, Florida GOP Representative Matt Gates openly claimed that the contents in Hunter Biden's laptop consist of illegal business deals, pornographic images, and unacceptable data. However, what astonished Matt and the committee the most is that Brian Von Dran, the assistant director of the FBI Cyber Division, had no clue about the copy or the contents of the Hunter Biden's laptop lying in their possession since 2019. Take a look. Now you're telling me right here is that as the assistant director of FBI Cyber, you don't know where this is after it was turned over to you three years ago. Yes, sir, that's an accurate statement. How are Americans supposed to trust that you can protect us from the next colonial pipeline if it seems that you can't locate a laptop that was given to you three years ago from the first family, potentially creating vulnerabilities for our country? When asked why the FBI is not aware of the contents of the controversial laptop, then Von Dran responded by saying that Title 18, Section 1030 of the FBI cyber program prohibits him from accessing any laptop without authorization which is why the laptop is not under his investigative powers. Okay, let me quickly refresh your memory of the shocking laptop scandal. The owner of a repair store in Delaware, John Paul Mac Isaac, claims that Hunter Biden dropped off his laptop and hard drive but never returned to pick it up. Moreover, the most surprising part is that the repair store owner is legally blind. And because of this, he could not identify the person who left Hunter Biden's laptop for repair. Later, the FBI picked up the laptop and the hard drive, but a copy of it was handed over to then-Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani, who further shared the copies of its contents with Republican operatives and conservative news outlets to ensure 
Biden loses the 2020 election by accusing him of engaging in corrupt practices with Ukraine. When the news outlets investigated the authenticity of the contents, many of the MSM outlets and big tech openly rejected the contents by referring to serious doubts about its credibility. Even former intelligence officials also claimed that the contents were part of the Russian disinformation operation. However, only the New York Times and Politico confirmed the authenticity of the contents. After the 2020 elections, President Biden himself revealed, I learned yesterday for the first time that the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware advised my legal counsel that they are investigating my tax affairs. I take this matter very seriously, but I'm confident that a professional in objective review of these matters will demonstrate that I handled my affairs legally and appropriately. At the end of the House Judiciary Committee hearing, Matt Gates was unanimously permitted to share the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop on the congressional record by also allowing them to enter the receipt Hunter Biden signed at the computer repair store. We all know too well what it's like to be forced and conditioned to wear a mask in airplanes, public transport, or any other public place, and we all have been forced to adapt to the suffocating feeling that prolonged wearing creates. It's been 14 months since the mask mandate from the Center for Disease Control has been hovering around our heads, and it had been set to expire on March 18th, but was extended by the Biden administration until at least April 18th. However, the good news is Florida's Attorney General Ashley Moody, with the support of 20 other states, have now filed a lawsuit to ban this mask mandate permanently. The lawsuit claims that the CDC has interfered with the affairs of the state by unacceptably exceeding its power. As tourism has been heavily affected by the mask mandate, the lawsuit has asked the court to direct the defendants, including the Transportation Security Administration, to pay damages for their losses. Now, according to Governor Ron DeSantis, if politicians and celebrities can attend the Super Bowl unmasked, every U.S. citizen should have the right to fly unmasked. It is well past time to get rid of this unnecessary mandate and get back to normal life. The battle to unseat Oregon Governor Kate Brown has commenced. The progressive Democrat cannot run again, making the 2022 election the first in more than 20 years that there will not be a past or current governor on the ticket. Republicans regard this as the most significant opportunity since Vic Aia was appointed in 1982. Democrats were looking forward to pursuing the Democratic ideals they have promoted within the state for more than 40 years. On December 15th, Democrat State Senator Betsy Johnson left her post in October and now she will run as an independent and is skipping the spectacle altogether, but not without firing both organizations. Having to choose between another left-wing liberal promising more of the same or a right-wing Trump apologist is not a choice at all, Johnson wrote in her email to supporters. On December 15th was Johnson's last day in office following her resignation to focus on her run for Oregon governor. Oregonians deserve better than the excessive and nonsense of the extreme left and radical right. That's why I've decided to run unaffiliated with any party and loyal only to the people of Oregon. Republicans believe they are pretty well situated to take power in the state for the first time in 40 years because of the widespread displeasure with the Democrats' administration's handling of the COVID-19 regulations and overall extreme far-left progressive policies. Portland's television station, KATU-TV, made a change in their requirements to partake in a television candidate debate slotted in April on the 7th, then postponed the debates because of strong criticism and pushback. According to a March 18th email from KATU producer Yvonne Barnacle, he wrote, Candidates must raise $750,000 by March 31st to be eligible to participate. The threshold would have reduced the 19 GOP candidates eligible to participate to five, and the 15 Democrats down to just two. And that's it for today, my friends. Don't forget to like and share, and most importantly, join our member site and support the mission to deliver truthful information. I'd rather depend on the generosity of you, people I can trust, than ever be dependent on YouTube again. It's great to be back, and I'll see you next time.